Hi, folks. Welcome to the newly renovated Levy Theater. Uh, this is the home of, Wig of Wigan Buckle, the 80 plus year old student run theater company here at LBC. And I'm Dr. Kevin Pry. I am an associate professor of English. I am also the executive director of the Wigan Buckle Theater Company. In normal times, we would be in the middle of rehearsing our fall musical, but we're living in interesting rather than um, the normal times. So we're here to continue another tr tradition which always has its start in this space, and that's the annual ghost tour, which normally happens uh, on the Friday evening of homecoming weekend uh, as a live tour of the campus uh, done by yours truly. A another one of my uh, curious titles here at LVC is I'm the Ghost Master General. So I've been doing this for, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, hard to tell. I inherited it from Judge Walter, uh, who was the original ghost tour conductor. And uh, my background for this is that I am, first of all, not a real believer in ghosts, but I'm a storyteller. And I learned to tell ghost stories in Great Britain. In fact, uh, I honed my craft in probably the most haunted city in Great Britain, which is York in the north of England, and found often that just sort of a matter of fact telling of the tales without a whole lot of you know, costumes or theatrical stuff uh, was actually far more effective at getting the audience to wonder and to ponder and to be scared. So we're going to uh, take this opportunity to take you on the tour or a selected parts of the usual tour uh, that we're filming so that we can continue this tradition this year in these strange times. Hi folks, welcome to the basement of the Humanities Building in LBC, which is one of the older, still existing buildings on campus. Uh, it replaced a building that burned down at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, it has very interesting uh, architectural characteristics, but the reason we're down here in the basement tonight is because this is the scene of one of our uh, most intriguing ghost stories. It's called the Phantom Basketball Game. Now this humanities building has been revised inside, has been renovated inside several times and over the years it's become uh, not simply classroom space and some of our technical support and business offices but it's also the place um, where uh, the president's office is above this. However, in the old days, the president's office was an open space with a, with a track around it on the second floor. And that was open to down here where there was a half basketball court, which was the original gym for the entire college before Lynch was built uh, and before we expanded across the, uh, across the railroad tracks. So we're going to tell you a story that's about that basketball court, which apparently is still being used by somebody. So if you follow me, we'll, uh, we'll show you. I like it when the lights turn on by themselves. Okay, this is, this is our mail room now, but if you take a look around and look at the floor, this is the original basketball court flooring from way back at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, and the reason that that's significant is, uh, in fact, when I was a student here in the 1970s, I actually had a um, political science class right in this room. It was a classroom then. And in those days, the, 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 you know, the markings and the foul lines and everything were still there. So at any rate, this flooring extends across the whole building um, uh, east-west. And the reason it's important for a ghost story is this, that, as always, our, our ghost stories here at LBC start with the same phrase. Uh, it's a dark and foggy night at 2 o'clock in the morning in Anvil. Uh, and people are passing by the Humanities Building. And of course, there's no real life showing because there are no classes by that time. And, and the cleaning ladies haven't come on. They don't come on until much later in, in the morning. But it's at this point where, where people passing by, whether they're townsmen 
or students or folks drifting back from the bars. Um, here, as they pass this building, a very raucous pickup game of basketball thumping away down here. Now, when they hear this, uh, they do one of two things. They either try to peer in the windows, which they can't because there are blinds on them, or if the building is unlocked, and in older days, this, the buildings were not heavily secured as they are nowadays, um, or they'll call public safety. And when somebody comes in to investigate the noise, they follow the noise down here to the basketball court that was, and as soon as they walk in, the noise stops. Because whoever's playing basketball doesn't like being disturbed. And so having seen that nothing's going on, they promptly turn around and leave. And the moment they get outside the building, the basketball game starts again. There is no backstory for this. It's just a, a phenomenon that occurs every so often. Uh, and uh, it's one of our more uh, entertaining stories because when people come through and they see the original hardwood floor, they go, ooh, you know, what about that? So that's why we like it as a story. Uh, a lot of ghost stories have some, some small, tangible part of them, uh, which helps people believe them. Uh, other stories have um, detailed backgrounds. They happen, you know, something particular happened at a particular place, and that's the particular cause. Ghost hunters love this stuff. But those of us just tell ghost stories know that you don't have to have what the ghost hunters call an inciting incident. You just have to have a good story that, you know, some witnesses have attested to that sort of says something about the campus. And in this case, it says something that buried in a lot of our buildings are a lot of the college's past. Our next stop here is, of course, Bishop Library, but we're not here because of the history of the Bishop Library, although it's got a kind of creepy history, although it's a very new building. Uh, the original library for the college was, of course, uh, Carnegie over there. Like, it's a Carnegie Library. He gave them that, like everybody and their grandmother. But this part of the library actually straddles the site of an old dormitory that was, was here back in the 1970s when I was a student. Um, and it had a big carriage archway in the middle of it, hence the archway behind, it, behind us there. And uh, the story that I learned, actually learned from the person who's probably the ghost. Uh, I was doing summer theater here in the mid-1970s in Lady Theater, which wasn't Lady Theater yet, uh, and we took a break. Uh, we'd been rehearsing in, a, in an afternoon and we were gonna have a night rehearsal. So a couple of us broke up and went downtown to get like a sandwich from the convenience store. And so it was um, an older actor named Chubb Hostetter and an even older actor whose name was Israel Early. And we were walking towards the old dorm and Izzy, who had a, a Pennsylvania German accent you could cut with a knife, said, hey, Chubb, Kevin, you see that room over the top, the gable room over the top? And I said, well, sure, Izzy. He said, that was my room when I was here. It was my, uh, it was my uh, favorite view of the campus. It's got the best view of the campus up there. I really loved it. Well, he was 80 at that point, and some years later, he passed away. Uh, and they tore the building that he had lived in down. But when they rebuilt, when they built the Science Center and rebuilt the library, they decided to echo the architecture by putting the Frock Conference Room up there over the arch where the, uh, to, to represent that old carriageway and the gable. Well, ever since that time, people out at two o'clock in the morning on a foggy night in Anvil claim to see a smiling face of a little old, dried up little old man staring out at that window, smiling over the campus. And those 
of us who had the privilege to know Izzy early think maybe he just comes back from time to time to look at that beautiful view. So that's the story of the Frock Conference Room Ghost. Hi folks, we're at Juhas Commons. This is a fairly recent part of the campus development. Uh, it's named after Rosemary Juhas, a Dean of Students, who's since retired. And we're um, flanked on either side by dormitories. Now, when I was a student here in the 1970s, I lived in Funkhauser Hall, which is right back there. It has its own ghost stories. Uh, but this place here is significant in the ghost tour because this is approximately on the site of the Old Anvil Railway Station. And the reason that's important is one of our most poignant and spookiest ghost stories has its base here. It starts in a kind of funny way. When the campus acquired this part of Anvil to build these dormitories and this commons on, they were going to just demolish the old train station, which was back here behind uh, this dorm and uh, was a wooden structure and in my day you didn't go near it because it was infested by thousands of bees. Uh, so when the dorms were going to be built the uh, college was going to just demolish the thing. They had permission from Anvil to do that but it was rescued at the last minute so they had to find another site for the train station and so they found a site down the railway tracks here about a quarter mile, half mile uh, down Maple Street, this side of Maple Street and they re-erected it. So it's there, you can go down and see it. And that's when the trouble started. If supernatural stuff is trouble to you. Uh, starting at that point, students here, which would have been the street leading to the train station, began to experience bizarre, <laughs> odd encounters. Almost always, at two o'clock in the morning on a foggy night in Anvil. The stories have different um, versions of them depending upon who encountered what. But usually, you know, someone's walking through here and it's a foggy night and out of the fog, um, either from the area of the train tracks coming this way or from town coming this way, comes somebody, usually with a valise or a suitcase or a duffel bag, always clothed not in modern dress, but in the clothes of the 1890s, or the early 1900s, or the period of the First or Second World Wars. These travelers, if that's what they are, uh, stop a student or a townie who's passing through here in the fog and ask them where the train station is. Now most of our students have no idea that the train station was here and was re-erected down the tracks. That is not a fact generally known to our students. But our students have been reporting for years, ever since these dorms were built, that these travelers appear out of the fog in the wee hours of the morning and they're looking either for the train station or they're looking for the college, which of course Back in the 19-teens and 20s, the college was much farther, I mean, the college buildings were all on the other side of College Avenue. So asking somebody where the college is and saying it's here was completely bewildering to these travelers. And the travelers would, you know, sigh and they'd sort of go off into the fog, either towards the tracks or towards the town, and they would dematerialize. They would disappear into the fog. This has been happening for a long time now. Now, stories like the return traveler stories are usually created in towns or villages or, or college campuses uh, because people mourn the loss and they wish, you know, there's a fond wish that people, they could, you could see the people who've died one more time. And so our return traveler story is a classic example of this international archetype. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, the story's kind of moving because it's about loss and recovery of memory. And I think that's why it's one of the most valuable stories we have here at LBC. Well, folks, we are now on the site of the most famous, one might say notorious, LBC ghost story. And that's the story of the little girl in Mary Green Hall, which is this building behind me. 
Mary Green uh, was uh, built a couple of decades ago, several decades ago. When I was a student here, it was a women's dorm. Um, and of course, it behind it, there's a small parking lot and then there's the street that runs along the railroad. And that street is central to this particular ghost story. The little girl in Mary Green is a small child, like an eight-year-old or so, seven or eight-year-old. Uh, and she's heard in the hallways, laughing, giggling, <laughs> running up and down the halls, bouncing a playground ball of some kind. This uh, has been reported more than 250 times in the last 35 years. Many, many years ago, so the story goes, on opening day of the fall semester, a family was moving their daughter, their older daughter, into this dorm, which means lugging stuff up and down the stairs. Uh, back in those days, when this dorm was first built, you know, the amenities were not very common. People didn't bring refrigerators and things like that, but there was still a lot of stuff to bring. And so mom and dad were helping the daughter move in, lug up, meet, meet a roommate, and there was a little sister, eight years old or so, who was um, underfoot. She was just, you know, getting in the way of everything. And, and she was bouncing this ball up and down the hallways, getting in everybody's way. So mom told her to go outside and play because it's a college campus, what kind of problems can happen? So she took the ball and went outside dutifully and began to bounce and play. And the ball, so the story goes, got away from her and she ran out into the street back here to, um, to recover it and a car hit her in the car. But it always has a sort of happy wave of fresh air that goes with her whenever she's seen or heard. Because if this site, if we follow that psychic um, imprint idea, if this site was played on by generations of happy little Anvil kids over and over and over again, couldn't the site and the ghost actually be the, imp the imprint of those happy times? As opposed to the result of some tragic, non-existent accident? Who knows? Well, folks, we've come to the end of this virtual LVC ghost tour. Thank you for spending time with us tonight. I'm Dr. Kevin Pry from the Humanities Program in the Department of English, and I'm the Wigan Buckle Advisor. When COVID is over, come and see our shows. Uh, if you're ever on campus, uh, when there's a regular um, homecoming, please come and see the tour. Uh, and also, uh, I want to thank everybody at uh, the Alumni Office for helping out with the making of this. And I also want to um, tell you that if any of you are alumni and you have an LBC ghost story that you haven't heard on the tour, call the alumni office with the details and they will get it to me and we can add it to the tour. So I wish you a good night, but just remember, watch out for those foggy nights at Anvil in two o'clock in the morning. See ya. <laughs>